Our dance is with Cole Fultz, and tonight we are playing Red Hand of Doom with DM Patrick. But before I, I let Patrick take it away, please, in the doobly-doo down below, check out our a link to Extra Life and our sister shows as part of the Heroes Wanted collective of shows. Uh, now, without further ado, take it away, Patrick. Thank you, Stephanie. Welcome, everyone, to tonight's episode. I am Patrick. I will be running the show tonight. Joining me are... Uh, Ian, and I'll be playing Augustus Gustantine, the Fort Cleric of Maladin. Uh, howdy, everyone. My name's Chris. I'm going to be playing uh, Radigan Conover, a uh, human artificer and a uh, man riding through the forest on a horse whose name he's completely forgotten since last session. And uh, Nabil here, I'll be playing as Duma, a Minotaur Barbarian, and I'm not the horse he's riding. Yeah, hello, I'm Lorne, I'm playing Curious, the Goliath Monster Hunter Ranger, and I, too, do not remember the name of the horse that I rode in on. <laughs> Y'all got amnesia or something. Hi, everyone, I am Tara, and I am, be I am playing Sithrin, disguised as Vasa, the Silver Dragonborn Great Weapon Fighter. I'm Stephanie, and I am playing... Uh, Cassandra Bowman Whitaker, uh, <laughs> divination wizard and anime fan, who remembers her horse's name, then her name is Cupcake. Excellent. So last session, yes, you guys arrived in the charming town of Drellin's Ferry, the trade town at the western end of the Vale. You went to the Old Bridge Inn for food, drinks, baths and a job. Uh, Speaker Winston and Captain Sorana offered you guys 500 gold each to help stop the Hobgoblin Horde, which is starting to amass somewhere in the northwest above the Witchwood. And Witchwood. You guys agreed, and in the morning you went, procured some magical goods at very good rates. And you also bought some horses and a donkey. Uh, you were told you should seek out Jor, a hermit in the Witchwood, and get him to be your guide. And you were also given the location of Vrath Keep, which is where you have a treasure map uh, leading you guys to claiming that underneath this ruined keep is uh, a treasure hoard of some value. You set out along the dawn way. In the late morning, you ran into a couple of poisonous trolls, which hurt you and sprayed you with poison as you slashed into them. You eventually felled them, burned their bodies, and then headed off of the road onto a small trail leading toward Jor's house. And the trail that you were on leads past a small cabin in a deep forest glade, a ramshackle front porch is littered with fishing baskets and skinning frames. The cabin overlooks a dark bayou or lake with old gray cedar trees draped in moss rising out of the water. An old skiff is tied up on the shore nearby and a little smoke curls from the field stone chimney. And uh, just joining us right now is uh, Brendan. Brendan, please introduce yourself. Uh, as, as he said, my name is Brendan and today I will be playing the greatest Kiel, a wonderful, wonderful half elven bard. And as you, as a group, came around the corner and up the path towards this cabin, uh, from underneath the porch uh, came the sound of baying and barking, and three massive dogs. Uh, have charged out across the yard and have stopped about 10 feet away from you. And uh, are just sort of snarling and baring their teeth. And what would you guys like to do? Uh, Puppies! Rad Radigan's going to step forward and uh, uh, just hold out his hands and go, Whoa, doggies, whoa. How close are you getting? That close. Good boy. 
Uh, so you you stay just inside the range, and I mean, their hair sort of bristles. You can see this line of fur sort of along their spines. And with an eight in animal handling, yeah, they just and they don't move forward, but they do not back down as well. They just continue snarling at you. What was the name of the uh, guide? Jor. Jor. Excuse me, Mr. Jor, are you home? And as you say this, one of the windows sort of on the cabin sort of slides open and you see a man with, you know, sort of full kind of graying beard and he sort of peers out and you see that, you know, a bow is kind of drawn and uh, looking out the window sort of peering at you, you just hear this voice saying, ah, what you want? We were told that you are the best guide in the area and would be a fantastic choice to hire to guide us around. And with that, he just sort of whistles and the dogs immediately stay where they are, but they stop growling, stop moving. And the cabin door opens in this lean, you know, very woodsman of kind of indeterminate age now steps out onto the porch. He has this sort of seamed, leathery look to his face and his arms. And, you know, the bow may be put down, but he's got this huge curved knife sheath strapped to uh, one of his thighs. And he just kind of, uh, you know, rasps out at you. Uh, don't get many visitors out here. Who are you? Who sent you to me? Oh, I am the great Ezekiel, and I will cast Minor Illusion and spell it over my name in fancy font. Um, um gr uh, okay, and what who sent you? Uh, the town mayor. We were asked to um deal with some issues in the forest and surrounding area. And the rest of you? Uh, we're we're with him. We're we're sort of a party. I can yeah. uh, fix we're, we're, anything we're that is uh, broken if you need anything like that. I am a party. <laughs> and he, he we looks, are a group. He looks around and says, "The hell happened to your horses? They they look like they've been beaten to a pulp. Those poor animals." Uh, uh yeah. It turns out that, uh, there's uh there's things in this forest. Um, I am. How do I we're looking for a god? Poisonous troll. Uh, uh, what are you looking for in my forest? Uh, well, we're uh, we're looking for a uh, uh, we're looking for a safe uh, safe path uh, to and from a, a place called uh, Skull Gorge. Yeah, Skull Gorge. Uh, up in the mountains, uh, we've got some uh, we've got some hobgoblins to roust, and uh, uh, we're we're told that. Uh, uh, it's it's a dangerous place, and uh, well, partner, I think uh, uh, I think that you're the man that everyone recommends uh, guide us through. Goblins, yeah, I can't stand them. The woods rotten with them right now. All right, I'm your man. Five gold a day as a guide. Ten if you got a mind to go off someplace dangerous, and I'll lead you to the edge of the woods and no further. Fifteen gold a day it is. Ten. I'm offering him more because I want him to like us. You want everyone to like us. I do. Fifteen. How stupid is what you're doing? Uh, we're, we're primarily going to... All right. Bear with us. We got a pit stop along the way. Uh, there's a little keep along the main Donway, and, uh, We'd like hey, to stop hey stupid, I know it's Brath Keep. It's well, keeps yeah, maybe eight miles north of there. Out you go to the big road, it's about eight miles up. Wouldn't uh, surprise yeah. me. It's them goblins are holed up in there. Well, Just I mean the sort of thing damn goblins would do. Well, I mean, that's part of the reason why we're going there. Um but uh uh we're going in there. Might be uh might might, might be some stuff uh, worth checking out aside from the goblins, but uh that's the, that's the stopover, and then we're heading out to the edge of the woods. Um, 
And after that, I think uh, uh, I think that might be all we need you for. Um, but uh, it's uh, it's a little detour, but I think uh, I think that's it. What do you expect to find at the bridge? Uh, we're not rightly sure. Um, we just know that uh, that's the direction that they come from. Yeah, that's what I suspected. I think they they got a stronghold somewhere up in the worm smokes, but uh, seems like we got a big old war party somewhere in the forest, and maybe they come down the old forest road, or might be they come by the gorge, and I'm, I'm betting it's a gorge. Yeah. Well then, that uh, I think settles it. Fifteen a day. Ah. Give me two minutes. And he whistles. The dogs immediately sort of disperse and head back, uh, you know, on their roost sort of under the porch. And, you know, they're still kind of watching you guys. But after a couple of very short minutes, you see he comes out and he's, you know, wearing sort of simple leathers. Uh, and has basically just sort of donned uh, a cap, got his bow slung over his shoulder, a, a quiver full of arrows, a small sort of uh, sack, and then his huge knife is at his hip, and he just says, days of wasting, let's get walking. I like him. He's just so, so... Rugged. Distinguished. He's Smelly. leathery. Uh, and as he walks, you see him turn to one of the trees and says something uh, that none of you guys understand because none of you are, are a druid. Uh, and you see a wooden figure step out of one of these trees and just sort of nod and walk into his house. That was very cool. Very, very interesting. Very he just says, ah, yeah. Wodes, they uh, they help protect this place. They look after the dogs when I'm out uh, a wandering. The dogs will not be coming with us. That is a shame. No, no, no. They're my they're my unfriendly persuasion on the porch. They stay here. They're so cute, though. But that's okay. Is there any way we can buy a puppy? I don't think that's a wise question to ask. Yeah, he looks at them and says, well, there, there's no male among them, so I don't know how I'd be giving you a puppy. Oh, we'll have to find a stud then. <sighs> we will not be here long enough for puppies to mature. All right, to come to term. Uh, I, lean in, I, I lean in a jar and say, uh, she's a city girl. Yeah, I can smell it on her. Ooh, she wears you. almost as much perfume as that uh, makeup man. Excuse me, it is cologne. Yeah, and it's bringing the bugs. Just and you might want to, you might want to cut down on that a uh, little bit uh, there, uh, Ezekiel. Just, just for this trip, if you don't mind. <sighs> All right. Once we get to the the marshy area, you can, you know. Cover yourselves in mud, and it'll it'll keep some of these natter flies off you. Mud. Just think of it like a compact. And he leads you guys down, you know, continuing through this forest path. A couple of huge boars kind of crash through every once in a while, and he'll he'll sort of have you stop. And you see him talking to some of the the. Uh, sort of bushes and trees on the way and he, you know he'll sort of sniff the air and he'll he'll just turn back and just say goblins on them riding dogs have been through here recently keep an eye out uh any idea the directions let's see how his survival goes uh he says uh they just seem to be crisscrossing everywhere but uh, they're uh they're scouting, and uh, I've heard uh, and seen a few of their parties, and I've set a few traps here and there that uh, have caught one or two of them, but uh, they're uh, spreading far and wide. I don't like it. We really are uh, fairly proficient when it comes to uh, dealing with things such as this. Um, 
So if we have an opportunity, we will probably try to kill some while they are away from the crew. He nods and smiles and just says, ah, it's good. But uh, you, you be careful. There's some tougher ones that are probably holed up in the keep. So I don't know if you yeah. want to face them uh, or if we want to do some scouting first. We have run across a couple of um, stronger ones already. Uh, but we will play it by And when you say that, he'll he'll sort of turn and look at you guys, and you see him maybe reappraising you a little bit, and he just kind of, eh, you know, pulls a plant off, starts sort of chewing on it, uh, sort of thoughtlessly, and turns and keeps walking. And after a couple of hours, the ground underneath your feet goes from a little more solid to a little spongier, a little damp. You start to get this smell of sort of rot and marshness. Uh, as you guys slowly start heading into the marshland area. Yu-Gi-Oh will change his shoes. <laughs> to what? He has a second pair of shoes that he carries around to make sure that his actual travel shoes that are nice don't get dirty. So galoshes? Does, does he put on galoshes over his shoes? No, he has like a second, second pair of like plain leather shoes that he like hates wearing. <laughs> and detests, but he's okay with them getting dirty. All right, and you can feel yourself starting to descend into a low valley, and eventually you come to a point where a wide expanse of dark water has flooded this area of the woodlands, making it very, very marshy. And the trees still protrude from, you know, the very calm, dark waters here and there, but many large reaches seem to be little more than open pools of algae-choked water, you hear the trill of frogs and the buzz and whine of insects just surround you constantly. Uh, the forest road leads right down to the edge of this flooded section, up to a rickety looking causeway made of thick planks of wood lashed together with mossy rope. The wooden causeway <coughs> runs for several hundred feet through the boggy patch, only a foot or so above the water. All right. I'll uh, lead the horse, up, or I'll, I'll, I guess I'll get off the, I'll dismount and I'll lead, uh, I'll lead Trigger along, uh, sort of very slowly, making sure that the, uh, the causeway is, uh, the causeway is fine. All right, and it's solid underfoot as you uh, walk your way forward, and I will say up ahead, uh, you can make out over on your left here. Uh, with your passive perception, uh, the wreckage of a wagon that's lying on its side, sort of half sunk in this flooded uh, marshy area, and it's about 30 feet from the causeway on your left. Uh, hey, Jor, that been there for a while? He looks and just says, ah, that seems fairly new to me. You want to go have um, Heidi check it out? Yes, that actually sounds like a good idea. Heidi, go! You don't have Heidi. She oh, got, uh, she got, she got, got hit. Yeah, she got got by the trolls. I don't have a Heidi. All be... right, I will go check it out then. Uh... All right, you step off of the causeway and immediately into this, like, I want to go here thick, where it's dry land. Wet. Yeah, and I mean, you can. You can get a little ways, but even with, you know, quote unquote, dry land, there's still water that seeps up uh, lightly. And it is, you know, as soon as you sort of step into this, it's almost, a, you know, difficult terrain. But you're able to uh, actually give me a dexterity check. Let's see how dry you can keep yourself. Straight dexterity? Yes. You get a proficiency bonus. I do. It's already added. Uh, you, your feet still get wet as even as you are trying to stay on this, you know, more dry land. You hit a couple of patches of moss or something that just sort of slips and yeah. So you almost lose one of your leather shoes at, at one point, but you can make it out uh, over towards the uh, the wagon. Almost All right, I would like to see. search it. Has anyone told him about the leeches? 
No, we're gonna let him discover that on his own. <laughs> I've got leeches salt, are actually good fine. for you. Did you know that? I can heat metal and kill the leeches with fire. Yeah. I've got salt. It's fine. All right. What do you want me to roll to search the thing, or am I uh, you, am I close enough? Give to me it? an investigation check. I mean, as you come up, you can see that you know with the wreckage, uh, there are a couple of. Uh, hobgoblin bodies that are still sort of half sunken in the mud. You, you see the glint of some of their uh, armor, and you can see there are a couple of uh, items of sort of foodstuffs in a barrel. And uh, you also uh, just sort of make out uh, what appears to be a snake sort of slithering through the grass. And as you look around, you see there's a whole bunch of just small, tiny little water snakes that are slithering out uh, around and past you. All right. I will be very careful. Do I see anything of note with that investigation check? Uh, anything said, more? So you, uh, the, you know, the rest of the, the hobgoblin bodies that you see, everything looks uh, a little sort of muddy and dirty, but uh, the breastplate of one of these hobgoblins is still surprisingly clean and shiny. A breastplate, you say? I will take uh, a rope, because I'm assuming I can't just, like, take it off really quickly. Uh, it would, it'll take you... Um, you can cut the straps and I repair it. Yeah, you can cut the, yeah, you can cut the straps and start taking it off. I will do that then, instead of wrap, wrapping a rope around them and ha having them help me drag it to shore. Yeah, Brad, All right. You should as... have wore your water moccasins. Yeah, Ooh. I'm keeping a watch out. As you are uh, leaning over this body and slicing it off out of the water and grass uh, and sort of muddy area, the rest of you on the uh, causeway see this snake? No, not a snake. It's a massive tentacle that comes out and makes a swipe at uh, Ezekiel. <gasps> I know where this is going. Oh, God. Uh, that is a 29 to hit. Okay. Uh, you take 19 bludgeoning damage and are grappled. Ouch. You should take one more damage. Come on, it's 2020. Uh, and then a... Second uh, tentacle comes out and attempts to get you as well. So uh, what kind that, of pansexual imp are we getting next? Uh, that is a critical hit. Uh, you take 34 points of bludgeoning damage and are reeled in towards this creature that the rest of you see start to come out of the water. I vote the Dean. How far negative are you? Oh, God. Uh, minus 26. It's a fro. I regret this, but at the same time, I it's love a, this. It's a some sort of behemoth. And Made of frog. It, it attempts to bite you, but only rolls a 14, so does not actually bite you. But He's you are grappled and so unconscious. Has, you have yeah. advantage. I know. Really? Yes. Uh, and so, yeah, so I need everyone to uh, roll me initiative. The one time I don't want to roll high. Yeah, that was a... I thought for sure I was going to have you swallowed, and no. Don't worry, Brendan, I rolled low for you. Oh, no, uh, Lauren did better. So what do we do with this some sort of behemoth creature or frog? I don't know. Yes, we, all, we all know what it is. We all know what it is. All right. So the great Ezekiel, give me a, a death saving throw as you are unconscious in its uh, grasp. All right. Uh, what did you roll? Do my 20. Okay. So I'll move you up. I am now a single one away from dying. Was that a natural one? No, I'm a single one away from dying. I, I failed one. Ah, yes. 
All right, that takes us to Radigan. All right, Radigan uh, levels his gun and uh, starts blasting. Don't uh, cross the streams. All right, Scorching Ray, uh, two of those hit. Awesome. Uh, so, yeah, it's uh, 14 plus uh, 17 damage. Yeah, 31 damage. So, yeah, two fiery uh, bursts come out. Uh, and surprisingly for uh, Radigan, they strike something. Uh, and you hear this <laughs> sort of, you know, cry of sort of anguish as uh, it steams and sort of smokes as the fire hits. Uh, all right. Any movement, any bonus action? Um, yeah, uh, I think I will have a bonus action. And my bonus action, as I can find this uh, bloody thing, uh, is to summon this guy. All right. Yeah, your turret shows up. Uh, oh, what wait, size? No. Nope, sorry, that's an action, not a bonus action. Never mind, it does nothing. It's coming out next turn, though. Uh, and it will, right. be, uh, it will be tiny. Okay. That takes us to Duma. Oh, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, Duma's gonna... Can he see the tentacles that's pulling on the Great Ezekiel? Yes, it has surfaced out of the water to try and... Uh, as it tried to bite and swallow uh, Ezekiel. So it is currently, uh, you know, above water and it is a massive, massive creature. And the uh, ground below, it's going to be difficult terrain, I'm guessing. Yes, it is uh, marshy and swampy, so it is difficult terrain. Okay, it's going to be, I'm going to be sensible over here, not going to the barn. And I'm going to rage and pull out a jab and hit the creature. And 11 does not hit. It Your javelin splashes into the water. Okay, going for a second. 22 hits. With a 5 pierce. All right. Yep. Your javelin strikes and, you know, it. Oh, you see it sort of move, but it doesn't pay too much attention to it. And uh, bonus action casting Ancestral Guardian uh, Protectors. All right. Yeah. So swirling around this frog hemoth are uh, your spiritual protectors. Okay. That's it. Any, uh, no movement? Um, not from where I'm standing. All um, right. It is the Frog Hemoth's turn. Rip. It is going to attempt to bite the Great Ezekiel. At least it has. Does so with disadvantage. Straight roll because he's unconscious. Yeah. That is oh, a 19. That is a 19 to hit. Well, he's dead. Well, hold on. Hold on. That hold is on. one failed saving oh, throw, and you are swallowed. Uh, it's an uh, crit, isn't it? Yeah, he's unconscious. Yeah, but that Yes, it still... is. That's still just one saving throw, though, right? This frog he Hemoth already is has one a failure. A crit is two failures. That'd be three. This thing is having a real fancy feast, though. Because Ezekiel is very dead. Oh, wow. Okay, Ezekiel, yeah. Ezekiel has been swallowed and disappears from view from you guys. Oh, is that not damage? Uh, it's, uh, it's damage, but you're... He, he bites and swallows. Oh, so. So yeah, there was 26 piercing damage and you were swallowed. I'm coming for you, don't worry. Do I get um, 
advantage for my accent? <laughs> uh, no, that is for it. It cannot reach you guys with attacks. It is going to submerge down into the water. Damn it. That takes us to Sithrin. I can't see it now anymore, can I? Uh, not immediately. If you uh, you can use a perception check to try and spot it. Uh, I will do that. If I can't see it, otherwise I would have just jumped in and fired at it. Well, there's there's rings in the water right here. Uh, with that, oh, that is enough. You can actually see that, yeah, you see three of its little eyes pop out of the water over here. So I, you know, shout it's over there, and I'm assuming I can't really do anything else because that was my action, right? That is your action. You still have your movement and a bonus action. I will run forward. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Um... I don't really have any bonus actions I could do, I don't think. Yeah, no, that, that's all I can do. All right, that takes us to Augustus. All right, so this is difficult terrain. To, oh, my God, I will go back to selection. In the marsh. Yeah, in the marsh, it is difficult terrain. Okay. You run across the causeway. I can, but I was seeing if I could do a charge, which gives me a second hoof attack. The light green, you can probably move through it, difficult terrain. The dark green, you're going to start swimming, and the blue is yep. really deep. Okay, well, I'll just move up to... Uh, we don't want this thing to get away. How are we going to stop it? I'll move up to here. That's my 40 feet. Oh, it's actually, no, because I have to move through you assholes. So 10, 20, 25. 35. I will just stop there. And... Well, let's do something that should help. Uh, um, oh. Ah, oh, come on! He's been swallowed. You can't see him. No, I'm, ta I'm targeting the thing. Oh. oh yeah, that, no, that. a 10 does not hit, unfortunately. Yeah, your guiding bolt uh, fires past. Bonus action? Uh, no bonus action. No, because all my bonus actions require me to be up close and... Oh, wait! Um, I'm going to shout really loud and go uh, with a healing word directed at uh, Ezekiel. I all am right. dead. Oh, I have to see him? He yeah, can't you, just hear You also have to see him. And I am dead. Actually, and cannot be he I'm not down, I'm dead. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, he's dead. You're dead. You're also swallowed, which means you have full cover, which means he cannot see you. Ah, okay. Well, then, fine. Bonus. <laughs> God damn it! You also can't cast spiritual weapon because you spent your action on a spell. Yeah, you cast a oh, spell, yeah. not a oh, yeah. uh, not a cantrip. Okay, then done. All right, that takes us to Cassandra. Oh, that's my bishi, damn it! Uh, okay, so I can see... The the frog hemoth. Uh, yes. Should I do? What should I do? Oh gods! Blind it by the light. Kill it. Uh, and you will hear uh, Jor yell out, uh, "Lightning! Lightning! Lightning hurts it!" I don't have lightning. Oh wait. Chromatic curve orb lightning. Roll your attack. That hits a uh, higher level cast. So well, yeah, da the light lightning damage. So I take out my oh. little little um glowy figure figurine, and I like. Toss it at him and it's like. All right. Yeah. And, you know, this lightning burst uh, fires out as soon as it sort of impacts. And you can see the frog hemoth 
sort of shake. And uh, again, there's a little bit of sort of sparking and steam that, that flies off. It may not have done as much damage as you want, but uh, you can see that it almost kind of freezes momentarily. Uh, and then Jor is going to pull out his bow and hit twice. And that takes us to Curious. All right. So first off, I use my bonus action to apply Hunter's Mark like normal um, using the uh, favored foe. It's my last one of the day. I had taken my bow out earlier, so I pop off. Oh, wait, I should actually activate the Hunter's Mark tab. I pop off two shots. Both hit. One. Oh, sorry. Yes, a 10 misses. Uh, yeah. Yes, a 10 still misses. Yeah. Nine damage. Eh, not great. Um, and I guess I will move forward a bit and spread us. All right. That takes us to Radigan. Okay. Uh, 10 gets me there. 20 gets me to that space. 30 gets me there. Um, and... A little uh, little mechanical beastie jumps out uh, of the tool bag and pops into there. And where is the turret's force ballista? That hits. Uh, yep, six force damage. Okay, yeah, your ballista fires out a pulse, and you can see just the skin of the frog hemoth just kind of wobble and... Uh, and shake uh, as it absorbs the damage. Anything else? Um, um, my action was to summon it. The bonus action was to fire it. No, that's it. All right. That uh, takes us to Duma. All right. Duma's going to try and see if you can pull whatever's left of the great Ezekiel. So. Here, here. Yeah, that's pretty much going to be my movement. I think I can cover that. I'll be fine. 40. Yeah, I think that should be 40. And. Uh, that is difficult terrain that you're hopping into. So, 5, 10. Yeah, you can just. Uh, no, wait. 5, <clears throat> 10. 15. Yep, you can just make. If you go straight diagonally, it's the only way you're going to make it. So yeah, that'll because that'll be 10 and 10. So yeah, you just make it to the edge. And yeah, you, you are at the uh, side of the frog hemoth. Okay, so I am going to be Still raging, but no, I'm not going to. Okay, not going to be reckless attacking, but let's go with regular. Still raging. 20 is a hit. Wow, opposite ends. Yeah, 8 does not hit, unfortunately. Uh, this frog hemoth is starting to look kind of battered and cut up. Uh, you can see some of the like massive scars that are already across it. Uh, and it just seems to be sort of shivering and shaking uh, in place as you strike it. Okay. And Ancestral Protectors is still in effect on this thing. Yes. Uh, and because it took lightning damage, it no longer has multi-attack. Uh, hmm. So you see as you're standing next to it, Duma, its tongue lashes out and attempts to grasp onto you and pull you forward. Give me a, uh, a strength saving throw, please. Oh, advantage. Boy. How do I have advantage? I don't. Aging. That's reckless attack. I thought rage. Rage gives you advantage on uh, on strength checks and saving. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm not. You're I'm raging. Not, okay. Uh, you're too angry yeah. to be swallowed. 
I'm too angry. To, oh, wow. Thank nice. you. <laughs> yeah. So it attempts to pull you closer and closer to it, but you are able to plant your hooves into the mud and muck and you do not move. Uh, and you can see it was attempting to open its mouth and attempt to and try and bite down on you, but it could not pull you close enough. You really that takes us to Sithrin. All right, can I get close enough to it? Not particularly. Well, I can. Difficult terrain. Uh, yeah, all right, I'm going to hop down. And then swing. That's 15 uh, as feet soon as deep you, water. Yeah, as soon as you Bam. step into the water, it's 15 feet deep. You just whoosh immediately. Whoops, all right. Um, Rewind. Yeah, so I think... That I'm not going to have enough movement to get on the other side of Duma, am I? You can do it from there. Yeah, you can always go there. because yeah, True, because he's still technically in that space. Okay, that's what I will do then instead. Boom. So, 13 to hit. I'm assuming that misses. That does uh, miss. The 11 misses. But I'm it going does. to action surge. I want to take this guy down. Oh no! Citherin, you are just slipping and sliding oh. in the muck, and the you cannot get your feet, and your sword just swing or your axe just swings wildly, and you cannot make contact with it. I almost take off one of Duma's horns. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's it for me then. Augustus. All right, so. Um, let's get rid of this thing. Question. Because I can easily move, it's like half my movement, less than half my movement to get there. Can I continue with a jump and an attack? Yeah, you're moving straight forward. You could definitely leap in. You're going to land in deep water, but you can certainly do it. Yeah, I don't want this thing to get away, so... We gotta get the corpse back, so we hear the clippity-clop across the uh, wood as I leap. Do you want me to do an athletics check for that? It's nope, because it's, yeah, it's only 10 feet, so that's easily within your, your jumping range, and you, you ran forward. And I'm gonna use my... Please tell me I have inspiration. I do not. Damn it. You're inspired to save me. Yeah, unfortunately, you leap off and... No, my accent... Take... My accent gives me an um, advantage. You leap off and you swing down with your hammer and it, it strikes the side of it, but just kind of slides off uh, the wet side of it as you splash down into the water. That uh, happened last bonus time action. too. No, um, I didn't move enough for charge and for shield bash. I think I need to have actually... Just you just need to attack for shield pass. You just need to attack. So yeah, you can still you can still try and uh, knock it with you your shield. Knock it prone in the water. <laughs> yeah, we'll knock it prone. So I miss, and my whole bulk hits it between the eyes. I got uh, athletics check, right? Yep. I'm a sad horseman. I'm it only got a burger. It only rolled a ten, but it still beats your six. Did I have luck on this character? Nope. 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 These. Roll. It has a plus six to strength, and it rolled a ten. Uh, that takes us to Jor, who is going to fire his longbow twice. That is a critical hit for eleven and a regular hit for ten. Nice. Looks bad, this guy. Uh, that takes us to Cassandra, who is currently coming down the stairs. There's no stairs. It's just like a boardwalk. Yeah, I'm assuming you're going to go with uh, the same thing as last time. Try and get that uh, lightning damage. Lightning damage. Lightning damage. Roll your attack. That hits, and again, the electricity arcs and sparks around this creature, and you see it start to uh, sort of shake and twitch, uh, and, you know, its mouth is kind of moving uncontrollably. Every once in a while, maybe you catch a little glimpse of uh, 
this white makeup on its lips and teeth. My bishy. Great Ezekiel is literally rolling in his grave due to electrical current. Uh, that takes us to Curious. All right. Bonus action. I mark it as my foe. Okay. Uh, arrow one. Hits. Arrow two. Yes. Hits. That that's twenty four so. damage total. Uh, yeah, so yeah, so both both arrows strike true, but now you can actually see the creature is starting to kind of shriek in pain, and, and its tentacles are trying to sort of snap and brush your arrows away. It is clearly feeling this, and uh, it is looking very badly off. Top of the round, Radigan. All right, uh, Radigan's going to uh, uh, step up to the uh, uh, step up to the boardwalk, put one foot against the uh, against the railing, cash in his inspiration, and cast Firebolt. Okay, All right. that uh, wasn't as I was hoping for the uh, critical hit. Yep, seventeen does strike. Uh, again, it's the fire hits and sort of steams off. You don't think it did as much damage as you would like. Uh, but it definitely did some, and this creature is starting to look scorched and battered, and it still can't seem to focus. Its three eye stalks are sort of scattering everywhere as it is twitching from this electrical energy. Excellent. And then the uh, and then a little tiny robot jumps on Radigan's shoulder and fires into the water. Yeah, it fires just slightly wide. It actually hits the water, and it separates, and you see Augustus under the water just kind of <gasps> take a deep breath, and then the water sort of closes up around him again. Duma, you are currently being licked by this giant tongue. Oh, I'm going to give him something to lick about. Don't Please don't phrase it like that. Uh, 13 does hit with the electrical energy, reducing its uh, armor class by two. I, sorry, I didn't disable that. But it did hit, right? 13 hit, does hit currently. 12 damage. Second attack. 23 hits for another 12 damage. Uh, this creature is on death's door as Duma is just slicing and hacking away at this tongue and it is starting to sort of bleed profusely and the water around it is getting darker and darker with this creature's blood as it sort of shrieks in pain. And still affected by the ancestral guardians and that's it for me. All right. It only has one attack. It is going to reach out and uh, try and swat at you, Duma, with a tentacle. So it comes out of the water from behind and sort of whips around and swings into you. And it gets a natural one. Uh, so as it's swinging around, it actually gets caught up around Gus's legs under the water and cannot pull it free. Uh, and that is Sithrin. This creature is very badly wounded right now. Uh, it's not going to make a difference if I can't hit the damn thing. <laughs> armor class is currently 12. 12. Yeah, I don't trust my luck lately. Do the yes. Oh, see, there you go. Both of those hit. Finish it, Sithrin. Yes. Sithrin is just like so angry that she's lo probably lost like yet another comrade to this like filthy slimy beast um she hacks off one tentacle with the first swing and with the other she just comes right across the belly just splits it right open and out of its guts come a melange of sort of fish and you see a bully wug or two and then the crumpled body of ezekiel most of his makeup sort of wiped off you can see his sort of dark skin as he starts to uh, fall out and drift down uh, this moving water. And Augustus, you're able to sort of grab him and drag him. Yeah, I was going to uh, say, I grab him. Water. Yeah. All right, who's going to resurrect this spell? <laughs> Who can pay for it? We're well, saving this one. I can uh, run back to town with him quite quickly and get back here hopefully by evening. But uh, you, please tell me you've prepared Red Reviv Revivify. I will explain to my dead friend that I would love to revivify him, <laughs> but the trolls that we fought today were quite taxing. Uh, I think I'm dead then, right? Yeah, revivify is only a minute. You don't have any yeah. higher level spells? 
I am a. We're He's only fifth got fifth level. Fifth. We're fifth level. We only have two third level spells if we are lucky. Uh, you would know uh, from the people you met in town that the cleric there will be able to bring Ezekiel back. Uh, do you have, uh, what is it, repose? Gentle repose. I didn't think that would work because he's not living anymore. Gentle repose keeps corpses preserved. Yeah. Yes. Oh, but no, I was thinking spare the dying. Uh, what? What's gentle repose? That's It's a... the one that keeps corpses preserved. You've no, used is it, it a can before. Trip? Is it no, a... it's a first or second level spell. First level. No, uh, I haven't. Let me check. It is only uh, mid-afternoon. So, yes, if you uh, put Ezekiel on your back and raced back into town, Augustus, you certainly would be able to uh, get him back to... We don't have the gold. Yeah, you are each gold. you are each owed five hundred gold. So you, I would say you'd be able to. Uh, Brother Durney would uh, maybe take that uh, in lieu of uh, any other payment to bring Ezekiel back if you guys wished. Cover in advance. All right. Yeah, sounds good. Um, we we have killed an ice god. How is this forest kicking our ass? Swamp. Uh, Actually, did uh, I, my, uh... I, I yelled out at some... I would have yelled out, by the way, about the magic breastplate. I yes, yeah, him. you probably would have said, I'm going to get this breastplate. And yeah, unfortunately, its stealth was really good and uh, yeah, caught, caught you guys off guard. Uh, what are the rest of you guys doing while Gus uh, heads back into Drellin's Ferry? Someone get the breastplate Why? I died for. Uh, Just... I I will yeah, we'd we'd dive into the swamp the and I will lasso the breastplate and drag it out. But we can't really do much else. I mean, there's really no point. Aside from like maybe just going and finding a place to camp and just wait for Gus to return. Yeah. That or sure, uh, where Where's yeah. good to camp here? Hopefully along the road. You can prep that breastplate for my well, We return. haven't traveled far from his place, so... Why don't we just go back to his place? Because I don't want to have to make this trip again. Uh, and Jor says uh, we can, I can, we can find a place to camp on the other side of the the causeway, and uh, maybe, maybe we, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, scout out uh, the keep tonight and don't do anything foolish, but figure out what we're up against. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's get this thing out of the wagon and then let's go make camp and then let's try not to anger any more giant green things that can kill us easily tonight if we don't mind. So I'll get them to tie him on extra tight so he doesn't have to fall so he doesn't fall off and make sure you look after Maurice in my cart huh? as I ride off. So, All so, right, so you... he lash his hands together around your midsection yeah. and la lash his, his waist around your other midsection. Forward, forward, no! His back neck. Yeah, and so, Augustus, you race back into town, into Drellin's Ferry. Give me a constitution... Uh, yeah, give me a constitution uh, save to see uh, if you can fight off some exhaustion after this long... Well, he's already he's already dead, so I'm trying to keep a decent pace, but not like a I'm gonna kill myself pace. All right. And apparently not. I'm just gonna kill myself. Yeah, even even going at that speed, uh, you know, it's this day has taken a lot out of you, and yeah, with an eight, you do pick up a level of exhaustion, uh, and you make it back to brother Durney, and you see he is sort of hesitant at first, and he tells you, you know, how much it's going to cost, but then he looks into your eyes, these deep, soulful, wounded eyes that Augustus has, which Help makes my people... Friend. Please, yes, which please! You finally get to use this, but yes, he looks at you and, and sees the, the brokenness and the hurt inside you, and he 
willingly agrees uh, to bring back the great Ezekiel. And as a fellow cleric, he asks for your assistance uh, in this. And together, you two are able to uh, perform this ceremony. And you see, you know, he pulls out from behind his altar this large uh, diamond. And he just, you know, places it on Ezekiel's chest. And he starts to pray. And then he turns and stops uh, and just says, uh, who did Ezekiel uh, pray to as a um, hmm, as one from the under realm? Um, I do think he did tell me, but uh, I cannot remember. He did help me it's, with a number of services. The symbol is literally emblazoned on the the he did, side of the earth. He did help me with uh, my services to Moradin, so why don't we just play the symbol? Oh Save my god. And bring him back in the name of Moradin. <laughs> And he will, as he, you know, sees that symbol sort of emblazoned on, he will just say, oh, I... Elastre. Yeah, I, I will, I will try Elastre as well. And he prays and this diamond, you know, flashes and then darkens and almost crumbles away. And with that, Ezekiel, you <gasps> come back to gasping life. <sighs> <laughs> There's a With Gus magic. over you. Everything Breath is okay. You're space. just having a dream. We're back in town. What? Just kidding, you I, died. I died. <laughs> Damn it. It's okay. It's okay. Everyone else is safe in that camp. We are back in town with our good friend here, the cleric of... Uh, Thank you. Thank you, good man. And I will... Uh, Ezekiel will... Uh, presumably without his mask now. I don't know where the mask is. It's inside the frog still. Stand up and give him a giant hug and kiss him on the cheeks. The other clan. And, and Brother Darney, he just says, well, Pelor welcomes all, and it is the least we can do as you are fighting for us, my child. Thank you as well, Gus. Thank you. And he will give Gus a hug and kiss on the cheeks. Oh, no, that is not necessary, and I'll squirm a bit. Uh, how much was that diamond? That's the 300 gold diamond, 500. Right? Oh, 500. 500. Uh, I have 300 I will, on I will go ahead and put 250 gold down on that. I'll do just another... Just in case I die. <laughs> I'll do another 250 so he's not out. And in case we have to do this again, he's more inclined. Uh, uh, well, easy come, easy go. Yeah, and, and he will little look little at little you, Augustus, and, and, and just say, I hope I don't need to do this again, but I am always one to help the less fortunate, as Pelor is always open and willing to aid, and starts going on to this long, <laughs> long pontificating speech about the greatness of Pelor, and you know, it takes you guys about 20 minutes to extract yourselves from this. Uh, which... Halfway through, I'll nudge uh, Ezekiel in the ribs and whisper, I don't sound like this, do I? You do. Oh no. Oh god, the penalty though. Yep. Now it's only gonna be a minus three because you are gonna go through a long rest before we go anywhere. Um, but it's still minus three. What do you get a negative three for? Uh when you get raised from the dead, you suffer a minus four to everything. But only with raised dead. None of the other spells that do it in part of penalty like that. No, this takes a lot more out of you. So the rest of you, as this is going on in the evening, you guys, you know, with Jor's help, set up a very well-concealed camp off into uh, the woods uh, as uh, Curious and Jor are very adept at working with the trees and camouflage and are able to mask your presence fairly well. Uh, but with that, evening comes, and Jor again asks, do you, do you want to go scout? Do you want to check it out, find out what you're actually up against? Or do you want to just sit and wait? Uh, my stealth is not particularly great. Who's, like, super stealthy? Let's take a long rest. Well, we are, but I'd like to... Uh, like to Who has uh, better than a one for stealth? 
two. Guys. Mm. Mm -hmm. There we yes, go. Tafina? I have that. Oh, well, then never mind. We're yeah. good to go. Also, you're casting that every day now. It only lasts an hour. I cast it twice. It lasts for two or for an hour. All right. Well, it'll take it us an hour to get there and get back, right? Right. It'll take you a little more than an hour to get there. So I would wait until you get closer uh, to cast it. Yeah. Uh, but you guys are. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are able to do that easily enough. So who's going on this uh, expedition? Duma's severely disadvantaged at stealthing, so he. Uh, so will go then. One I'm the trying to get lighter. Heidi back. All right, you can you can easily do that while while they're building uh, and setting up camp. That's like an hour. Uh, so George's at camp. You're at camp. Um, Doom is at camp. Yeah, Doom is a camp. Camp's, camp's protected. I'll go. Actually, we only need one or two to, to go scout. So if uh, Curious is going and uh, Sithrin are going, then yeah, Radigan will stay back and uh, start cooking. Okay. Unless you need Radigan. Well, um, Curious, you've got ranged abilities, right? I was just using my uh, bow in that last encounter. That's uh... I'm not great with it. Yeah. Uh, like, like literally, it's it's a difference of like I think what uh, plus four to hit between that and my hand axe. Because I was thinking, you know, if you're better at melee, maybe we should bring Radigan along for like really ranged abilities, right? All right. Radigan it's up to will, you, Radigan. Uh, Radigan will uh, readjust oh. his hat and uh, well, head on out. On that note, have we identified that set of armor yet? Uh, after, if someone sits with it while everyone else is setting up camp, it is a plus one mithril breastplate. That's nice. Ooh. That was worth me dying. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the problem is there's like three so, party members who want that. Four party members well, who want that. I'm want one that. of them. I would Duma want that. Duma Duma Everyone Duma wants Duma. that. Uh, who got the last one? Armor here. Was it Radigan that got the last one? Uh, I know that I just have a Somebody bought. No, I have half oh, plate. Did somebody buy oh, it? Oh, it's half plate, plate, yeah. Okay, well, if you've got half plate, that, that's better than the plus one breastplate. Well... Uh, it, it would be the same. Yeah, same I'm looking at bonus. plus one breastplate is a 15 plus your dex. Where I'm just wearing a straight breastplate, so it oh yeah, be... no, that's that's definitely a gust thing. Uh, what about uh, what about our illustrious bard? I wear light armor. Does mithril not count as light armor? Does not. It removes the the strength requirement for armor, and removes and the stealth penalty. Sort of the, yeah, which a breastplate doesn't have anyway. Yeah, literally, the difference between a breastplate and scale mail, which I have equipped right now, is the dex penalty. Sorry, no, wait, breastplate is worse than scale mail. Yeah, breastplate no, is breastplate's the same. Breastplate only covers your breast, like your front. It doesn't do your back, it doesn't do your legs, doesn't it's do your back. Your... It's just like a big shirt. It's a, not a breast and back plate. Uh, okay, so looking at it right now, I think... Radigan, you are proficient in medium armor? Uh, yes. So I know you are, Duma, myself, Vasa, Augustus. So everyone except for the bard and the wizard are proficient in it. But nobody can wear it until it is repaired by Augustus. Who isn't here I'm a yet. smith. But are oh, you a leather true. smith? Because he's I'm a leather a, daddy. The breastplate. His, his uh, <laughs> outfit always did scream leather daddy. Listen, what Radigan does on Radigan's spare time, I mean, never mind. Nothing. Suddenly, have a new appreciation for you. Can we make so, a joke about uh, a blue color? Get worse. 
So, okay, I will point out right now that if I were to wear it, it would increase my armor by one. Same. It would put me at 20. It wouldn't increase my armor at all, so it's fine. You guys it's the same it. with me. It would increase my armor by one. So Duma's going to back out and say, I don't want this armor. I'm happy with my scale meal. It would remove right. the Duma stealth penalty, though. Yeah, I got split armor, so... Look, Duma is never going to be stealthy, even with the breastplate. He's just going to go rushing in, so yeah, so it's you, useless. Yeah, so you guys go ahead. Radigan will stay back and start fixing this breastplate. And what okay. is uh, what is uh, uh, Ezekiel's mask made out of? You. I never decided. Oh, you're gonna try and fix I think it's mask. probably made of metal with uh, with paint. So you do have uh, Radigan. The forge is with you. It <laughs> sure is. And uh, Radigan uh, reaches inside his uh, his tool bag and just slams down an anvil and starts getting to work. Well, there's an right. anvil. Roll on me a dexterity. Game. Roll me a dexterity saving throw as Augustus's traps all go off at once. Yeah. Woo! I fail. Good thing there aren't any. Although yeah. I'm gonna get there. Look up my cart and be like. Who who touched my cart? Yeah, like this Jack in the Box pops up and spooks you, but doesn't actually do any damage. And it's just this stern, like bust of Augustus that is sort of waving its finger back and forth. No, oh. uh, 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 I feel didn't bad. say I the, didn't magic, say the word. magic word. <laughs> Please, God damn it! All right, uh, I will fix the breastplate. Uh, see if I need to hammer out any dents in the mask, and then upgrade all of the cart straps. All right. Uh, so with that... Without telling Augustus. Yeah, and as this is uh, happening, um, you know, you notice that Jor just sort of shakes his head and he's like, quiet. As you are sort of hammering and, and you know, knocking and, you know, oh beating everything in the middle of this. And, you know, it does draw a few, you know, sort of animals of interest and things like that, that uh, I'll say Duma and he are just going to have to sort of keep watch and clear out as they are attracted to the sound you are making. What, like squirrels? No, like oh. boars and a couple of undead come sort of shambling out, things like that. No, there's an old survival technique I was taught where you hit two stones at a 90 degree angle and apparently it will bring squirrels because it's such a weird noise to them. I've never tested it and I'm pretty sure it's bullshit, but there you go. Is this a real life thing or a D and D thing? Real life thing. Oh. Yeah. Uh let's stick with something that's not going to get us in trouble. Yeah. Radigan right. will attempt to smithy as quietly as smashing metal with other metal can be. All right. Uh, give me your uh, proficiency check, please. That is more than enough. You are able to uh, fix uh, the mask of Ezekiel. You know, you repair a couple of tooth marks that have made massive sort of dents and scrapes uh, across it, and you are fairly easily able to uh, just reattach and uh, make the leather straps on the breastplate, you know, fit a little nicely and you, you know, chip off the red claw that is emblazoned across the front of it uh, just to make it a smooth uh, open finish for whatever design you want to put in uh, there at a later time. And as this is going on, eventually you hear the sound of this receding behind you, uh, Cithrin and Curious, as you move up the Dawn Way. And you come uh, eventually to a pathway uh, that leads you. And as the night sort of falls, looming out of the shadowy uh, woods around you, um, give me your stealth check with Pass Without Trace, please. 22 or 21. I can do proper math. All right, 20 and 21. Uh, so you guys are moving very quietly, stepping, you know, over the 
branches and the soft sort of leaves not making uh, very much noise. Uh, and you can see this haunting sight, the ruined keep in front of you. You see that this old castle sits on a small rocky hillock and you can catch glimpses of a broken tower between the trees. And, you know, this moss covered stone at the side of the road that you've been following uh, marks a footpath that looks like it leads towards the keep. Uh, and you can see uh, this sickly greenish yellow light flickering inside the second floor of the ruined tower. And you hear the faint sound of eerie moaning heard from within. What would you guys like to do? Uh, I guess I can send... This is like the next day, I right? you were there. Oh, nope, this no. is this is still the evening. This is happening while you were uh you're still back at the camp with uh Radigan. It was Curious and Cithrin who had crept forward to go scout the keep ahead. Um, okay, good. I'm back at the camp we... eating Pocky. Sorry, go ahead. Do we see any like windows, open doors, any uh, lights or just really... Yeah, you're still at the end of the uh, pathway. You're just seeing it loom out of the woods. You guys are going to have to continue to move forward down this pathway uh, to see any more of it. Uh, do we see any lights coming from it? Uh, you can only see right now the, the top sort of half of it, and you see the sickly greenish yellow light flickering inside the second floor of the ruined tower. And you guys so were like told, lights, okay. not that you can see at this point, but you guys have heard rumors that this is a haunted tower and mm. this seems to you know play into that as you hear this sort of haunted moaning uh give me a survival check uh curious as you look over this footpath that seems to go forward all right you can tell uh that numerous medium-sized humanoids based on footprints and several large wolves have been using this track recently uh, what, what do you with see? With that check, would I be able to de to determine if the footprints are around the same time frame? Like someone was potentially walking with a canine? Yes, they look like they are around uh, the same time. And I'll say with that check, uh, I mean, you see footprints. You also see similar type of prints that Duma leaves. And you can tell it's about a five minute hike up this path to the keep, or uh, you might be able to scramble up the sort of forested hillside around it to avoid coming directly to the, the front area of it, you think. What do you think, Curious? Staying out of sight's best, but it's risky to try and climb. I'd say climb. We climb. All right, give me another stealth check as you guys start moving through the woods. All right, let's see if what I did here That's is going to work. 17. All right, yeah, you yeah, guys, work. you know, move in and amongst the woods. And, I mean, this hillside, it's not difficult terrain, but it's certainly harder for you guys to keep quiet. Uh, and there's the occasional sort of dry leaf or cracked twig that you break, but you don't seem to catch uh, any attention or movement. And as you make your way up uh, in this, you know, sort of dim light, you can still see that the old keep is in very poor repair. You see that there's a gatehouse that is partially collapsed, as is a section of wall to the south, which is facing you right now. And uh, you can see there's a small little outbuilding out front and, you know, the walls around the keep appear to be about 15 feet high. There's a two-story tower looming in the southwest corner and that's where that sickly yellow and green light is coming from and allowing you to see sort of the southern wall. And uh, give me a perception check to see what else you guys can pick up.
Yeah, I see nothing. Yeah, it's starting to get a little dark uh, for you, Sithrin. Curious, you can pick up just in this sort of sickly light uh, that there are large boulders strewn around the ruins of these other sort of watchtowers and what appears to be a massive humanoid skeleton slumped amongst the ruins uh, in this sort of southern break in the wall here as well. Looks like it could be one of the skeletons of the giants that uh, historically attacked this place. Okay, th this is going to sound like a very very much uh yeah the, the out of character question but does it look like the rocks are in easy grabbing position for the skeleton uh there so are a few rocks that animation. are Yes, there are a few boulders that are very nearby, these collapsed skeletons. Uh, and, I mean, as the, the light is starting to sort of dim, uh, as night is falling, you know, you can't see too very much. But, I mean, it really looks in poor repair. Uh, and it looks like these giant skeletons have been there for a long, long time. Is there anything else we can pick up before, I assume, we've... Beyond going directly inside, which is not a good idea, in my opinion, is there any more information we could pick up based upon where we're located currently? Where you're located currently, you've seen uh, the the side, the southern side, and you've seen sort of the front entryway. So you see the path leads directly up, and there's two smashed gatehouses, and then you've seen there's a breach in this sort of southern wall with this giant skeleton. Uh, you'd have to continue around. Uh, to the western side of it uh, to sort of see any more. Okay. I or perhaps you could that. climb a tree to try and look down uh, inside the courtyard. Might be the other thing you could do. Are there any trees that would give a good vantage point for the rest of the general layout? Yes. There are a couple of very tall trees around you uh, that you could attempt to climb that would give you a vantage point. I mean, it's a very hilly area, and you assume at some point these would have been cut down to prevent this, but it's been a long time since anyone's been here, so the forest has grown back up around. How tall is the tree? The nearest tree that you think you could climb reasonably is about 40 feet tall. Okay. I will suggest that we, we climb the tree to get a good vantage point. Um, I'm not sure if, uh, Vasa will want to, uh, stay on the ground and lose benefit of my stealth aura, or if she wants to climb with me. Uh, I really don't like the thought of you being, us both being caught up there and something coming down with us being unawares of it. So I'll stay down here and, and keep guard in case anything comes up from behind. All right. That's our but plan. I will. I before before he goes up though, uh, Sithrin will kind of like do her best to kind of like move off a little bit and kind of like hide in like some nearby bushes, so she's not just like leaning up against the tree kind of thing for anyone to see as they come along. All right, give me a stealth check. Okay. Twenty four. You yep. melt. You melt back into the the woods. Uh, and give me an athletics check as you climb up this tree, please, Curio. Are you going to try and do it stealthily? Oh, yeah. Stealth check as well. 26. Yeah, you nimbly and quietly just make your way up this tree. And as you get up there, you know, it starts waving slightly back and forth. And it gives you a slight overview of... Uh, this keep. And so you can see that inside the courtyard, there are more boulders that have landed in the center. Uh, you're able to pick out uh, a sort of layout where there's two rooms against the southern wall, one of which appears to have a broken uh, space into it. And then at the far end of the courtyard, uh, you can see what appears to be stables that have been set up. 
Uh, you don't see anybody in the courtyard at first, but after a minute or so, you see a goblin uh, walk across the courtyard and uh, open the door to the southeastern uh, sort of room or area. And you see what appears to be a large cat of some sort walk out. And then you see its wings unfurl and it just quietly glides up into the night and disappears up to the north. Large Ooh. winged cat? That's <gasps> new. It's a Heidi! Oh, wait. Large. No, a homicidal no. Heidi. You're not Give allowed me. to have this one. You just get yours killed. Give me a oh. nature check, please. Yeah, in this dark light, yeah, it looks like just a large, very large cat. But yeah, the wings unfurled and it, it took off in flight. Did it have a weird bulbous tail? Roll me a perception check with disadvantage in this dimming light. Oh, God. Uh, you couldn't quite see its tail as it uh, flew off. You couldn't make okay. it out in the darkness. The wings were a little too distracting. All right. Uh, I will make my way back down. I assume I managed to gather as much information I can from my vantage point. Uh, how long do you want to stay up there? If it's getting near dark, I don't want to stay up there too, too long because I don't have dark vision. All right. So, yeah. So, so everything is really yeah. starting to dim. I will say uh, as the light falls, uh, you can pick up the smell of smoke, presumably from a campfire of sorts, and you see a little bit of light start to glimmer out of the room in the southwest corner uh, where there's sort of a breach in the wall that you saw and the light is starting to filter out of there. So there's clearly people in there as well. But you see the goblin go back up to the uh, area in the north uh, where you assumed it was uh, a holding pen, that kind of thing. All right, so I, I will, I will then climb down carefully, slowly, stealthily, and uh, I assume I knew where Vasa slash Sithrin was uh, hiding, and I will come across her and sort of get her attention and make like we have to leave. Well, honestly, even if even if you didn't, like she would have seen you, and she would have come out to greet you either way. But point being, we yeah. find each other yeah. again, and we head off. All right, give me one final stealth check as you guys move away uh, in this darkness now. Um, <gasps> so it's going to be 15 and 21. Is that with the plus 10? The pass without three should still be on. Yeah. 15. That is with. Roll to five. Wait for it. Please, 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 please. You guys pause. Oh, God. You hear something moving in and around the trees. Oh, no. And then you hear just a little sort of... Oh. And you Found see this giant kind of raccoon uh, that is sort of scratching down one of these uh, large, you know, trees in sort of the area. And it sees you and kind of hisses. Uh, but you guys are able to make your way out back down to the Dawnway and make your way back to the rest of your party without incident. Oh, thanks, Timora. That was close. How far off were we from like, getting some really bad? Like, if I had rolled a 14, we would have been screwed? Yes. Lord. Well, as wait, you wait, die... Wait, wait, we... wait, wait. You're saying we found an ROTS? Oh, God. R R O T U S. R U S. sorry. A raccoon of unusual size. Uh, not for Toronto. Yeah, dude, uh, they, oh no, dude, for people who are it. not from Toronto, these your raccoons are insanely big. Like, it's like they, do, they, they don't give a shit. They don't. You, you <laughs> literally have to kick them. Like, remember when I burst out the door and kicked them when they'd come uh, around the cats outside? We were trying to get them all trapped and neutered. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, because we lived at a place where there's one little tiny, like, uh, path between two houses to actually get to the door to get in, and these fat motherfucking raccoons would just sit there and go, chitter, 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 freaking me the heck out. So I always had to wait for <laughs> Ian or our French Canadian old lady to just scream at the top of their lungs to make them go away. Seriously, I'm folks. sorry. Seriously, that's folks, okay. The size of small dogs. And Love. with that, you guys will meet back up with the party. You guys get your long rest. Uh, I'm assuming Ezekiel and Augustus are going to spend the night in town. Uh, we could make it back, right? I you could. Would, I would need the help. You would. You would pretty much forego a long rest. Mm-hmm. No, no we would back. forego. We couldn't get, get back. Okay. Yeah, we'll sleep here. Back early leave early it'll be fine oh no yeah. we did not i did not bring your horse okay you can get on my back but don't tell anyone i let you ride me when you're oh, dead that's you. one thing but for now bed Gus, you are my favorite all right no, in the morning days. you Thank guys you. uh ride back up towards the rest of the group. We'll uh, stop before we get to camp. in the camp. Yeah, you'll, you'll arrive there in the afternoon. Uh, the group that's at the camp, in the morning, as you guys are sort of breaking camp, you hear the sound of sort of snarling and yipping. And when we come back from a five minute bathroom break, I need all of you to give me a group stealth check, please. Ooh, bloody hell. And then I can tell the party what I assume we're facing. They're back. An ass for you and me? Same. No, that's Are what we're facing. That? You assume we're facing something. So what? An ass for you and me? I... Sorry about that, Brendan. That's fine. Yo, that was a bit much to throw at level five as well. No, you guys wiped it in three and a half rounds. Yeah, but it one-shot me. Yeah, I didn't yeah. think it was going to get... That much surprise. I didn't think you were just going to run out to the... Uh, well, I kind of missed it. Without Why doing did... any perception check. Why did Mr. Fancy Pants not want to get dirty walk out into the swamp while we were all standing on the causeway? It really makes sense. You're right. I, I More or less, he wanted nobody else to risk themselves doing it. But that's what we would say about you, because you're, like, squishy and then get eaten by frogs. Apparently, I am squishing and eaten by frog. Frog. Squish, squish. The other option was a six-headed hydra, which would have presumably done about the same thing to you very quickly. Just in six pieces. Yes. So, back to raccoons and Toronto raccoons because we're waiting for people to come back. When we were trying to trap all the cats, we'd have food out to bring them. Um, three of them ended up as our indoor cats, but either way, um, the raccoons would come around out during the daytime, like any time of the day. Not sick, not rabies, just they knew they could come get food. Mm -hmm. So one night I got home early. And I was pissed at them because I would come rushing out the back door and Give them not a hard boot, but a boot on the bum to get them moving. Because you know raccoons in this town, they don't want to move for anything. Uh-huh. So I'm like, okay, that can't keep going because, one, I don't want to hurt them. And two, I could get bit. And I don't want to go get rabies shots. So I go to Walmart and I get a super soaker. I take it home. <laughs> And I fill it with vinegar because I thought about a couple different things. But again, I didn't want to hurt the thing and blind it. I wanted to piss it off so it wouldn't come back. Yeah. So I, I settled on vinegar. I thought that's fairly safe. It's not going to blind them. You can just run off. Done. It's not going to permanently blind them. No, it's going to irritate them. But it's yeah. not. I was worried it, about any, like it. anything that anyone who gets vinegar in their eyes is going to go. Ah, oh god, it yeah, burns, exactly. It burns. But I was worried that if I did something like cayenne pepper, like tons of it, that I might damage their eyes, and I didn't want to do that. Yeah. yeah. So I go up to the second floor, and I get into the bathtub, and I hang out the tiny window in the bathroom, 
out the bathtub with this super soaker. No. So if anybody's looking around, there's a couple houses that can see us. They see a guy hanging out the window with a super soaker. And I waited a good 45 minutes going in and out. Like I didn't spend the whole time out. And they finally came and they didn't see me. And I got one lined up and I started spraying him. And I got him right in the eye, right in the face. Oh. And little fucker turned around. That's it. Like he just moved his butt between me and the food. And I kept spraying him in the butt with vinegar. Like he is soaked in vinegar. He finishes and walks off. You know, this is a great story that I just, that, that I came in in the middle of. I have no oh. idea what it was, but I want to hear it. Oh, no, the quick the, the, the quick version is uh, I was trying to scare away a raccoon with a super soaker filled with vinegar, and the raccoon outsmarted me by just turning around and letting me shoot it in itself in the butt. <laughs> um, this is why I'm glad I rent. I, we were renting. We tend to rent houses, not apartments. What were you renting? The raccoon's place? No, it was a house that actually had um, like it's a, a house, really so yeah. terraced backyard. So it had like four steps that were each about four or five feet high. So it was all rocky. And every neighbor had that as well. But like half of them were so dilapidated that you couldn't get into them. So the raccoons loved, and the feral cats loved to live there. That's why we got into doing the trap neuter release, uh, just because there were so many cats around. Hmm. Man, your story just reminded me of back when I was in Windsor. I was on Randall's Street, and the houses, like the ones you described, were so busted so broken down i have no idea how that how the one i was staying at what the point i'm trying to say is the basement had holes which were going outside and one night we had a family of skunks sneak in and make a home <laughs> in the basement uh, and i think what and, you're trying to say is windsor sucks and we all knew that no, Windsor sucked from day one. Uh, I'm not. That's not the argument. The argument is I, none of us realized it, and we. I heard tick 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 like tick tick, oh, tick noises. Man, Nabil has great weed. I can smell it from here. Uh. Yeah, I ran down. I I just went downstairs and I saw these these little shits doing whatever they were doing. I just ran up and I told my roommates, "We're getting the fuck out. Call the landlord. We got we got to get rid of these things." And, Oh, they're so oh. cute, though. Baby skunks are like my... I want a baby skunk so I get it descented and scare away Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh. Open oh, the door, a... send the skunk out, and scream, It's in the house! Run! And Windsor has his own share of really nasty stories. There's a fat skunk that lives on our street, and occasionally when I'm going down to Walmart at night in the summer, he'll be out on the, the sidewalk, and I'll be walking behind him and be like, hey, skunk, and he'll move 10 feet down the road, get a little closer. Hey, skunk, keep moving. Moves another 20 feet down the road, forgets about me. Hey, skunk! Till he finally finds a place he can get behind a house and gets off the sidewalk. No. Skunks aren't a problem. I mean, I... I, I like them for a guy who's had to deal with them so much. My dog got sprayed a couple of times when I was in high school. Oh. But my parents were on vacation, so I ended up having to deal with it. At the end of it, I think the dog was more scared of me bathing it than it was of the skunk spraying it. <laughs> she All right, is everybody so back? Uh, Steph is just sitting down. She's just grabbing a drink so he can probably go. Yeah, and we're busy shit-talking Windsor. Well, and raccoons. All right. So, uh, Curious fills you guys in with what he saw at the keep. Is there anything specific you wanted to say, Curious? Uh, yes. I specify that I believe, although I'm not 100% certain, that the flying cat thing was a manticore. Yet Radigan immediately retreats to his tent. Every single character I have ever had has had manticores just spray needles right into his face. 
What's a tent going to do? <laughs> Hide me. Uh, make sure everybody renews your characters, because you have had a long rest. So that means Did... new portents. Question, yep. have Roll we decided portent. who gets the armor? And uh, <laughs> Ezekiel and I don't know this is going on right now, right? So we will. We will that is have, correct. We will have a nice leisurely brunch before we take off because he had such a, tra a taxing day yesterday. Oh, you! I ass. don't understand. Normally, I pay just the same number of taxes as everyone else, but yesterday. See, <sighs> you got hit in the head. You're not right. Have some wine. Have a mimosa. It is bottomless mimosas in Drellin's Ferry. Oh, we have to stay Why for a little bit. Why are we out in the swamp? Uh, so yeah, right. day three uh, arrives as you guys are in the woods. Uh, Radigan, you have repaired the armor. What do you guys want to do with it? Uh, I hold it up, praise my work, and then you know, sort of step away from the forge and then hold it out and say, huh? Huh? It's shiny. Sithrin will slow clap. It, it is shiny, but will it hold? You could test it on the horse, man. He's not a whole man. I'm not there, so I can't sway your judgment. No, you can't. Um, but so... Morlidin can, as his, as his spirit comes down onto your conscience. You'll if, you guys can't, if you guys can't figure it out, we'll do an old-fashioned roll-off. I mean, I would want it simply because it would, A, give me a plus one bonus to armor, and B, take away my disadvantage on stuff. Yeah, so let's roll. It's the fairest way. So roll D20. As, as, as Straight D20 this, roll. Yeah, as you're having this... I lose. Like, he's already, like, fitting it on Curious. Uh, like, oh, no, you're, you, you haven't decided yet. Okay. No, you hold it up, and you look away, and you look back, and Curious is standing in it while you're holding it up. <laughs> Damn, he's good. So, so it's mine and then, I guess. <laughs> it is. It is curious's. And as this is happening, you guys hear the sound of <laughs> snarling and uh, yipping coming uh, down the path towards you guys, and you can immediately recognize the sound of uh, wargs and presumably uh, some of the goblins that you saw last night. Curious, uh, you guys are going to have about a round or so before they arrive. What do you guys want to do? Let me set up oh, where you guys oh, are. Oh yeah, we were supposed to roll stealth checks, weren't we? Yes, everyone give me a stealth oh, check. Yes. Well, Radigan fails. Because he's I too busy 16. being all proud of his work. I thought you ran into the tent. I did, but loudly. Ooh, I am stealthy. There's a very rare and high-pitched scream that uh, comes from Radigan as he runs into the tent. Uh... All right, that is a success on your stealth check. So you do not think they have picked you guys up. Uh, you can hear them starting to sniff around and come down this path. Uh, you're going to have one round of prep. What do you guys want to do? Ambush or, 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 um, or run away. Ambush. Uh... Ambush. We're here to kill hobgoblins. All right, ambush. All right, fireball anybody? Boom. All right, let's have everybody roll initiative then. Are those six goblins, three of which are on wargs, or is it three wargs oh, with goblins? Okay. Right? I'd three like to wargs, three goblins. Okay. okay. Duma rolled two nat 20s with his advantage on initiative rolls. Nice. Oh. So everything is downhill from here. Duma wakes yes. up on the wrong side of the bed and is just like, oh, I feel like killing. Uh, so Duma, you are going to go first as you hear these uh, wargs uh, quickly sort of scampering down this path, presumably following uh, the scent of Curious and Cithrin from last night. Did they leave a scent without, with Path Without Trace? They, it only lasted an hour, and they traveled They traveled for more than an hour, so... And it doesn't leave footprints. It says nothing about scent. Uh, 
it could just be random that they came down this path too. Like there, there are only from the sounds you can hear, there are only a couple of them. Narrative causality says they're here. Let's go. Okay, uh, I'm gonna use my free action to whisper to Radigan, which is he's closer to me. Try and flank them from the back. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna distract them from the front. And okay, so I am going to do what I do best: be be strong, be tough, be stupid. So I head out over here. I start banging my shield and rage. And I take out a javelin, and it is just a straight roll. Sorry, rage, and here it comes. First Unless one. Out. Oh, oh this is not 30, fair. Holy jeez! Are you attacking? Actually, no, you're only thirty feet away. Yeah. Are you attacking the warg or the oh. goblin rider? Okay, I forgot to mention that. That's my fault. The warg. All right. Yeah, your javelin right into the side of the. Ward, roll your damage. Three in a uh, row. Oh, somebody cross your fingers. I need this. Oh, crap. This is the part of the movie where Aragorn runs off a cliff. That never happened. He is run, right? And that's a two and a oh, six. I remember now. Nine, yep. 10, so that 11. is 11 damage total. So the warg sort of stumbles but keeps moving forward. Uh, second attack as your yeah. ancestral protectors start circling around. That's a 13 straight roll. Against the warg, that hits. That hits? The giant fucker? Okay, take the damage. That's it for yeah, me? It is, it is badly wounded, and you can see it starting, but it is still on its feet and moving towards you. Radigan. Okay. Um, if I start moving through these through these bushes here. Yeah, difficult terrain, but you can do it difficult easily terrain. enough. Roll a poison right. ivy check. Ooh. Uh, so if I if I get to there, let's just uh, oh yeah, poison ivy. I'll 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 rub some bomb on that later. Um, if I get to there, I can shoot across, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, it's a little bit out of sorts for. Oh, I know what I can do. Where's my spell list? Oh, that's a second level spell. That sucks. I can't do that. All right. I will simply shoot the warg from underneath the goblin with one of these. That hits. And yeah, the warg absolutely just collapses into the ground on fire. Uh, and let's see how the goblin does. Goblin with an 11, I'm going to say, is uh, thrown, but is able to keep his feet. But that warg is now dead. Wait, Brendan, is that a thylacolio or the other one? That's the uh, other one, the Prolovia. Any more uh, movement? Any bonus action? Um... No, I think I'll uh, I think I'll stay there for now. All right, so the goblin would have been tossed there. It is the goblin's turns. Uh, okay. This guy is going to charge forward at you, Duma, uh, pulling out his scimitar and taking a swing. That is a twenty-two to hit. Uh, you take five slashing damage. Halved? Uh, halved as you are raging, so two slashing damage. I feel sorry for that goblin. Yeah, and this warg is going to charge forward its full movement uh, with, with the goblin rider on it. And the goblin is going to swing its scimitar. That is another 22 to hit. Uh, you take another two damage. This Are goblin... you guys even trying? Uh, pretty, pretty much the Lord. So this warg with the goblin is going to come down here. 
and it is going to fire its short bow at you, Cassandra. What? That is an 18 to hit for five piercing damage. Shield. All right, yeah, you shield. Ping, the arrow flies off. Uh, the warg in front of you, Duma, is going to attempt to now bite you. Uh, that is an 18 to hit. And you take five piercing damage after it has been halved. Uh, this warg has no more movement left. It just sort of crouches and snarls. And that takes us to Cassandra. You know what I'm about to do. Fireball! And I'll arc it, you know, away from Duma. And that's how Australia caught fire. Ooh. So you're gonna, you're gonna, no, that's not how it is. Wanna, it's just global warming. You want to catch the three? The what? The three uh -huh. around the... Yes. You want to catch the three beside Duma? Yes. Yeah. All right. And then I will sort of tuck into these bushes over here, trying to hide myself. And then Goblet I will have... Goblin one fails. Goblin two fails. And uh, Heidi will assist Sytherin. All right. And the warg uh, succeeds. Uh, now roll your damage. I'm assuming maybe the goblins have seven. 25 hit points. damage, they, motherfucker. Yeah, they are just... They are immediately turned to ash. Uh, the warg is still alive. It is burnt and blackened. I will say the trees around all catch fire immediately as well as this massive fireball goes off. Uh, so these parts of the woods are now burning as well. And you hear Jorgo, oh, no! I'm but gonna that take, takes I'm us gonna, to Cithrin. I'm going to burn it out. I'm going to burn it out. Or I'm going to water it down. It'll be fine. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe we don't set the forest on fire. Face it up against the warg. All right, it immediately takes its ready to action and attempts to bite you. Uh, that is a 17 to hit. Uh, yes. You take... Uh, it says here your AC is 17. My AC is 18. Oh, you got to fix your, uh, your name then. Uh, yeah, oh, so yeah, it goes, to, it goes to snap at you and uh, you... Duck out of the way, and with a 21, your great axe sinks into the sides of, of its neck. The one thing I didn't update was my name there. Okay. Uh, so the 15 misses, 21 hit. There you go. Oh, the 15 hits as well. Oh, awesome. Doop. Yeah, in two quick. Uh, you also had advantage uh, because uh, Heidi was assisting you. Uh, so the 21 is... Either that, I mean, 31 damage is more than enough to kill this row, this warg. Yeah. Woo! Warg is dead, so just the goblin. It is just the goblin. Uh, I'm not going to waste my action surge. Um, and those were my two attacks, right? Yep. Okay, that's it. All right, that takes us to Curious. Who will sigh? Strut up, mark it as his foe. Free arc. And then swing. I think I killed him. Because he had his bow out, didn't he? Uh, he did. So, yeah, his armor class is down to 13. Yeah, you just cut him down in one fell swing. All right. Duma, you okay? Duma, all good. Now the fire is starting to pick up as the trees are starting to burn around and beside you, Duma. Is it like within my immediate vicinity? It's creeping up on you because uh, it catches these trees above you up here. So you're starting to feel the heat. You're not taking any damage, but that tree is really starting to go up. Uh, is this particular tree on fire yet? The one yes. that's directly Oh, yeah. It, 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 it caught. It was caught completely. I mean, it was basically the centering point of Cassandra's fireball. So, yeah, it is, it is burning. And how big? I mean, I know this creature is big, but how big is this? Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a large uh, monstrosity. So it, is, it, is, it does tower over you. 
Okay, it, so. is, it is very badly wounded, but it is still standing. Okay. Uh, I'll quickly put it out of its misery. Still raging, and here comes the first. Oh, yeah. Still on its feet. Uh, second swing does put it down, though, as so, I mean, you can feel the fire and the warmth sort of rolling over you as, yeah, you just bring uh, your long sword down and cut it across the back of its neck and it collapses down to the ground in front of you with just a uh, large groaning sound. And the hobgoblins are still next to it? Oh, no, they were incinerated by Cassandra's fireball. Oh, they're gone. Okay, that's fantastic. So I can walk away. I can walk away from the fire. You can smell like Cassandra's cooking. Yeah, right. you, you slowly Everything. walk away as this explosion is going off behind you and the flames are, are rising up. And you walk towards Jor, whose face just is dropped and he looks absolutely horrified at uh, what is going on. Cassandra, uh, we need to talk about overkill. Um, and overkill? I start running towards the uh, towards the cart. I'm going to try to find any buckets I can. Uh, Jor, where's the nearest source of water? Uh, he sort of points. There is a small little uh, rivulet uh, on the other side of the trees up here. All right. And I, he I, immediately I races over it. there as well and starts, yeah, uh, you know, gathering as much water as he can. And I'll say you guys are able to put it out uh, after a while, but there is a large plume of smoke that rises up into the air. And... Oh, you know, we'll be able to find them then. Yeah, you guys are easily able to see this huge, huge plume of first black and then white smoke uh, up in the air. And eventually you guys all meet up back on the main road in the Witch Woods. We'll stop. We'll stop a little before. And I'll make him get off. But there is no way anyone's going to know you got to lie. And I'll make him walk the rest of the way. I will support him. Oh. And, uh, yeah. No, no you had a long was... rest, so that should heal Jeez. one point of exhaustion, right? That's not exhausting. I just have minus to all of my abilities, checks, or skill checks, uh, saving throws, and uh, attack. Every time I roll a d20, I subtract. Yeah, it, uh, life yeah. sucks for him right now. Uh, yeah, so you see Radigan desperately, like, clearing away underbrush, um, sort of casting, like, just sort of angry looks over at Cassandra. It's like, they were goblins. We could have taken them. Oh! Easily. Oh, Cassandra! You're so great! Just fireball them! Oh! Cassandra, oh. they all know we're here now. But on the plus side... literally I, sent I out a giant smoke them. signal. Oh, we're we're, cause we're gonna turn it off. It's it'll be fine. See, I'll use precious agitation to just get the smoke away. We'll just turn it off. I can't tell if that's Cassandra talking or Steph. <laughs> Both. <laughs> there we go. Mend, 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 mend. Are you happy now? I don't think oh. it works that way. Blow things up. Don't blow things up. It's confusing. <laughs> Why don't you stick with your Blow hand tie and Sindrid is walking away at this point. Blow things up and yeah. this is on. Oh. I said, get away hey guys, here. do you want me to fireball these things? And you all were like, yes. And now, and now, I was not you're like all yes. turning your back at me. Oh, Duma never, has, never said anything. Duma prefers blood over fire. We okay, do so... have a problem now, though. Yeah, uh, we're in the group now, right? It's it's yeah. it's time. To, yeah, you guys have arrived. They are yeah, going to start to uh, and go through the woods. Yeah, they are going to start moving in larger groups. We won't be able to pick off one at a time now, one or two at a time. Yeah, I'm gonna suggest we uh, we we head uh, uh, in towards uh, Wrath Keep. Uh, oh God, this thing's on a grid. Uh, through uh, uh, through the woods here. If uh, uh, if 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 that works for Jor, because Jor is the guide. Jor nods and just says, "It's going to be hard going, and it's going to be loud. So hopefully, we can uh, keep it a little quieter uh, as we keep moving through." 
Can't be helped at this point. Let's, uh, let's make the most of what we got. All right, so you guys move off in through the woods. It is very tight, dark growth that you guys are moving through. Jor, you know, finds as good a path as he can. Uh, but yeah, you guys are scratched up by branches. Uh, there's, you know, the sound of sort of birds and mosquitoes that sort of follow you around and are just hectoring you guys all the way through this. And what would be, you know, maybe an hour, an hour and a half uh, walk up the Dawn Way, clearly, you know, takes you a good three or four hours going through these woods. Uh, can I get everyone to give me a stealth check, please? We have Pass Without a Trace on. That is up to uh, Curious. I guess I will cast it, yes. 32! I'll be doing my stealth check like this. Uh, 22? 22. Yeah, you guys, you know, with Jor's help and with Curious's aid in pointing things out and with his spell, you guys are able to continue moving through the forest. Uh, I will say you would have had to have left your horses and the donkey back at camp or off the path because they cannot make it through these woods like this. Can my cart, if I take it? No. This is really dense, deep undergrowth. Uh, well, then can I make it? Your... If the horses can't make it, can I make it? You can make it, but it is it is a little more tricky and difficult for you. Uh, that's why, I mean, yeah, the Pass Without Trace uh, really helped you. And I will... Uh, curious, give me a perception check, please, as you, were, you and Jor are leading this group. I will say, yeah, every once in a while, uh, you catch just this sort of, you know, through the canopy at the top of the trees, uh, the sound of sort of beating wings in this slight shadow of something that is flying over top, uh, clearly keeping watch and scout above you guys, but has not noticed you with your stealth checks. Does it appear to be what I saw earlier? You would assume so, yes. It's very hard to make anything out over the canopy, but yeah, it, it appears to be of the same size. I had a forest fire map and didn't uh, load it up. I use prejudication. It's fine. The fire is not there anymore. All right. So you guys continuing along your path and your trek, eventually you come up to the south side of this building. Uh, and, you know, much like last night, you can see uh, this ruined keep. The old castle is on, is on a small rocky hillock. And, you know, through the trees as you're moving forward, you catch glimpses of a broken tower. And, you know, much as uh, Curious and Scytherin told you last night, you guys can all see the keep is in very poor repair. Uh, you can see that the gatehouse, you know, here in daylight has fully collapsed. Uh, and, you know, the southern wall that you guys can see as you are coming up along the edge there. Let me pull your characters on screen. So you guys are off the map a ways, but I will just move you down here so you guys can see everything. So yeah, you see there's this hole in the southern wall, there are boulders that are strewn about. Uh, you can see the skeleton of we are blind. Uh, what is clearly a giant. Yeah, I'm just uh, describing as I pull you guys onto the map. There we go. Yeah, we're not all on yet. Nope. I didn't know which direction you guys would be coming from. One direction. Can I give an anti-inspiration to Ian? You know, he rolls a disadvantage next time. <laughs> correct, though. Look, we just need to be in sync with our uh, with, with our actions here, okay? Uh, 
Chris, take an anti-inspiration. <laughs> Nabil, you do not have a leg to stand on for puns. <laughs> now get back to the street, to? all right? Yeah. So, yes, you guys see this southern wall. Uh, you see the area that is broken down. You see the skeleton of the giant there. Uh, you can see out in front, there's what looks to be the remains of an old garden. Uh, there's a small outbuilding, and you see the boulders and smashed, uh, you know, sort of gates at the front of it as you circle around to the south. I think this castle attacked the giant, huh? Well, you know what they say about making assumptions? You make an ass out of you and umption. Um, well, we left uh, the ass back at the with your horse. Right. So uh, this this uh, skeleton is that like on a partially collapsed part of wall or yes, is it just yeah. against the wall? Okay. Nope. So there's a yeah. Wall? There is there is an open section. You would be able to. I mean, you can honestly. I mean, you could almost take cover and climb through this skeleton. Uh, Cassandra, could you have um, Heidi look around? Yes, I will have Heidi look around. Heidi, see what my eyes cannot see. You can look through her eyes and see what your eyes see. But I'm, but I'm using her eyes, see? So I can't, and also I can't see invisibility, but she can. So what do my cat eyes see? Where do you want to send her? Do you want to send her through the broken wall and into the courtyard itself? That's what I'll do. Okay, so there's a, like a bedroom over here. There's a cat. Oh, okay, so this is a door. So courtyard. Yep, there's a oh, broken... Oh, there's a giant. Yes. There's yeah, two so giants. As you, as you move through the main part of the courtyard, you see a couple of these giant skeletons that are one that is slumped up uh, against the wall over here, and it is still wearing sort of tattered remnants of armor. And then you see a larger broken one that is shattered out along the ground. Uh, and you can see a small break in the wall here. And as Heidi sort of squeezes through that, uh, you find that you're in sort of a stables area uh, up north. And, you know, presumably this you know, it looks like the area where the goblins and the wargs uh, were as curious described uh, seeing the goblins come from that direction. And as Heidi continues sort of moving and flying about, this door here opens and popping out, there is a hobgoblin uh, in mail that is going to take a shot at her as they watched the cat fly across this doorway. Oh, can I at least make a stealth check? No? No? Oh, okay. Uh, they've been on guard and watching, so it was uh, their check to sort of make. Let's see how they okay. do. Plus, a flying cat can't be very stealthy while flying because it's fighting its urge to land on its feet at every, you know, moment. That is not how these things probably work. Got to stop and add it in random, uh, random vines and stuff. Yeah, exactly. That is, that is only a twelve to hit, which hits your armor class, uh, and you do take five piercing damage. So that is enough to pop Heidi back out of existence. No! Uh, and, but that does tell you that there is at least a hobgoblin that is in that building that you flew past. I will cry tears and be, and I will let the party know, and then I'm going to be like, we have to stop for an hour so I can get Heidi back. I think this Later. is some kind of like a, that is what, like six hours she had it? Yeah, it's fine. Just I don't know if it's ever lasted that long before. Let's, let's go in, let's be stealthy. It'll be fine. I don't know that we have the element of surprise at this point. I think we got the element of surprise. They're looking for a cat. They shot a cat. What do you guys want to do? Oh, Duma's getting restless. He is going to go rushing in like a mad cow. No, no, no. That's not the China shop. 
Oh, yeah, no. I'm going to bring this shop down. Anybody who funny. wants to come with me, come with me now. Radigan will, uh, will, will follow and attempt stealth. All right. So, Duma, you just charge and yeah, climb over and move through uh, that skeleton. Uh, I need, oh, it was uh, a skeleton. Oh, sorry. I thought it was a uh, rubble. Oh no, no it's, it's a giant just, skeleton it's and a rubble. Skeleton so yeah, you climb you climb yeah, you climb sort of through its its bones as it is a giant and make your way in through this wall. And with that, I need everyone to roll initiative, please. And Duma, you immediately pick up to your sort of left and above. Uh, movement as something is obviously uh, readying itself as you charge through the wall. I, I relay that message to the great Ezekiel and Curious before I roll mine. <laughs> uh, Lauren, you want to look at my initiative again? It's kind of hilarious. Uh, he's, he just stepped away for a sec. He laughed at his, his, uh, one and walked away. I oh. laugh at my further 1.1. 1. 1. Two nineteens I, 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 I do appreciate the, uh, I, I, I do appreciate the consistency there. In the... For some reason, I rolled 21 to keep it that way. So I want to say hacksaws on my own teammates. They're hacksawsing. I actually didn't get a twenty-three. I got a twenty. Because it doesn't subtract it from my initiative. I'll take the damn twenty-three. He still goes before you, even if he takes a twenty. No, oh, that's true. I already took it down to twenty. I'll take you down to twenty. You already took me down to town. And we had a nice brunch. And uh, six out of ten. You guys had brunch <laughs> while we were getting our ass handed to us. Yep. I with could mimosas. Not what are Zip these mimosas? I couldn't. I am very weak right now. First of all, there was a it? make your own omelet bar. They had portobello mushrooms. First of all, how dare you? And second of all, what the hell is mimosa? It sounds delicious. Champagne right, so. and orange juice. I'm pretty sure they just strangle a fairy in a bottle of alcohol. All right. Ezekiel, you are still up first. Duma, go hit them. And I'm going to hit him with enlarge. Ooh, nice. And bonus action, give him bardic inspiration. What the hell? You're just... I'll bring the house Duma, down this way. 55. Hung over Ezekiel is very, very um, less ostentatious. Very generous. I am he, we, he also we didn't just, kill him. just died. As, as a we should kill him Radigan more often. His mask. Uh, thank you. Why, why did you not give me this earlier? I am uh, not, a, my makeup is terrible right now. You had me walking around. I could have been hidden. Sorry, as a giant, what kind of bonuses do Plus I Plus 1d4, and then you have the stuff you're going to have from strength, or from raging. The, the like, advantage the on one, The 1d4 goes on attack or damage? or Damage. Both? Damage. Okay. And yep, the Bardic added. Inspiration is any d20 roll. You don't roll it until after you've rolled the roll. Okay, so, so I take a step forward and... after you roll. And I see this thing, and oh my minotaur god, what the fuck is that? Yeah, I thought it was Gordon. Yeah, you, you turn and look through that sort of gaping hole in the wall, and at the same time, you hear this, and yeah, you can describe what you see. Uh, as a, oh my god, it's another me. There well, is only one looks, of you. Oh god. There's only is one it in of me. Ropes? Why is it in ropes? I'm uh, okay. I'm going to go in. Guys, don't get in between me and this guy. This is going to be fun. And I step in, get in within this guy's range and start. I did okay, I rage. And 
First strike coming in. Does not hit. Oh, snap. He, he parries your axe away and just snorts. Remember, you have bardic inspiration. Don't oh. forget it. Oh, balls. Okay. Is it D6 or D8? It's a D8. D8. Okay. I don't need to roll it over there. Uh, your second swing does connect. Add a D4. D4 coming out. Hold on a sec. So that's 11, 14. 14. Yeah, so you slash into him and he kind of snorts and chuckles and just goes, <laughs> little one, let me show you what it really means to hit. Okay. And, and you see his eyes just sort of bulge big and like spittle sort of forms at the side of his mouth. He's like, ah! And he How's will... that work environment? Seriously? Hammering yeah. more? He... All right. Yeah, you try and headbutt him. Uh, he does not move. Okay. And, oh, I look at this guy go, oh, for once somebody knows how to fight. And that's it for me. All right, Wait, yeah. Did he, he lose to that girl you loved? I'm yes. I'm scribbling a lot of notes for my next fan fiction. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, this great axe comes down on you and hits you with a 25, Duma. Uh, you take, uh, let's see, when it's halved, you take 12 slashing damage. Christ, that's almost a whole Ezekiel. <laughs> that is half well, between like two fifths, two fifths of an Ezekiel. Yeah, and it will sort of grunt and snort and whistle really, really loudly. And with that, uh, streaking in above you guys from the sky, you see this giant winged cat that is starting to make its way back to you guys. Uh, it is not going to... Oh, actually, yes, it can. Uh, and you see its tail whip around and it will fire. Uh, it's these spikes out of its tail. It's still about 100 feet away. Uh, that is within its range, though. And so I'm going to say that is one at Augustus, one at Cassandra, and one at Sithrin. So the first one for Augustus. Four, 18. 14 misses. Uh, one at Cassandra. That is a natural one. Woohoo! And the one for Sithrin is a 20. Uh, uh, how far away? 100 feet. Darn it. Uh, that is 10 piercing damage as one of these tail spikes uh, hits you. That is it for them. That takes us to Cassandra. Okay, so I sort of wipe away my drool, turn away from uh, Duma, and I will fireball that motherfucker. And by that, Ooh. I mean the manticore. Good job. That is what we mean. That is a 21 for its dexterity, so it makes it save, but roll your damage. I'm going to say it doesn't. I'm going to use one of my portents. A 13. A 13? DC uh, is a 15. It still saves. That makes it a DC 16. Or that makes a yeah. 16 save. Oh, well. 27. Uh, that, is your port, that is your 13. So 27 halved is 13 damage. So yeah, so there is this huge explosion across the sky uh, as, you know, it completely engulfs uh, this manticore as it is flying. Uh, but you do see as the flames sort of subside, it is blackened and smoking, but it is still streaking towards you guys. I am going to, you know, go around and try and hide be between this rock and a wall. I'm between a rock and a hard place. Okay, yeah, these are very large boulders, so you would be able to sort of crouch down and get a bit of uh, cover. Yep, that's the plan. And that's about it. 
All right, Scytherin. Not much I can really do. Manticore is too far away for me to fire at it, right? It is 100 feet away. Uh, with range and a crossbow. It is within range of the crossbow. I will shoot it with my crossbow. All right. Uh, how? I have rolled like four 11s tonight. I am uh, pissed off more than that's why anyone around me is rolling low as well as me. God damn it, Gus. Do All right, second attack. Go. Oh, no, no second attack because it is a crossbow. Yeah, it's because it's a crossbow, yeah. So, no, that's I'll just move a little bit closer in with my peeps. But I guess that's really all I can do. All right. Radigan. Uh, okay, Radigan will spin his, spin his gun out of his holster and shoot the manticore for quite a bit of damage. Wow, yes, Maybe you're... 24 hits. 24 definitely hits. And yeah, that is 23 damage. So as it is flying out of this, you know, blast of fire in the sky, it turns and dodges a crossbow bolt right into Radigan's firebolt. And you can actually hear it roar uh, in anger and pain as it takes a fair bit of damage. All right. Any movement, any bonus action? Still coming, eh? Still coming. All right. Radigan's going to uh, crawl through the skeleton and uh, go inside. Okay. With that, uh, these hobgoblins in the room are going to both come charge up to you, Duma. And they will have their long swords that they will swing. First one misses. Uh, the second one does hit uh, for uh, reduced down to six slashing damage. Let's see. You see one come out of there and swing around, Duma. Uh, Radigan, you see coming around the corner and going behind that rock and pulling out its longbow and firing at you, one of these hobgoblins. Okay. Uh, and it s fires, but it actually hits the wall beside you and there's just a small spray of rock and you hear it curse to itself as it uh, really didn't do as well as it should have. Okay, that is going to that is going to take us to curious. Okay, uh, moving through the skeleton is that difficult terrain? No, it's it's large enough that uh, like its ribs are basically, you know, you might have to duck your head a little bit, but it's like walking under an awning. It's big enough that they'll call you Ender Wiggins. Oh, crickets. Yeah, apparently nobody read Ender's Game, the seminal, seminal sci-fi classic. What are you doing, Curious? I'm crickets. I'm thinking. All right, so bonus action, going to cast uh, Zephyr Strike. And that means I can move quite a distance. 20 feet to there, 30 feet to there. And another 20 feet easily gets me there. And I'm going to strike out at that guy with my hand axe. All right. And as you move around that first boulder, from around the corner comes another longbow attack. That guy there. Yep, and it was a 10, so it misses. So yeah, as you come running through, just phew, an arrow fires past your shoulder. Roll your attacks. I assume the 11 misses. It misses. Oh, wait, wait, 14. Because I get advantage on that first strike. Still misses. Strike. Okay, uh, 18 then. 18 does hit. 
Actually, wait, let me just double check the actual wording of the spell. He wants to see if he gets that crit. That too, yes. Well, that'd be awesome if he does. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh, that's the wrong spell. That's Hunter's Mark. I want Zephyr Strike. Uh, okay. Bum, bum, bum. Doesn't provoke our attacks of opportunity. Uh, once before the spell ends, I can give myself advantage on one weapon attack. That attack deals extra damage. Okay, so I don't deal any extra damage. I only deal the eight. All right. Yeah, so you're, you come down with your hand axe and, you know, the hobgoblin, you know, there's a sort of streak of blood and he just, argh, and sort of growls at you. Anything that's else? Turn. All no, right. That's my turn. Bonus action, movement. Actually, wait, no. Uh, because I don't provoke attacks of opportunity and I have another 10 feet. I'm going to move right up next to this guy and then end my turn. All right. All right. And yeah, you do that so quickly that the guy you hit with your hand X doesn't even react. Like he, he goes to almost swing and you're not even there anymore. Augustus. All right. So I'm going to, uh, make sure that at least, um, Ezekiel and Cassandra can get inside and cover. So I'm going to hold up my sheet. I'm going to hit, try and hit the Manticore uh, with a guiding bolt. Well, you know, bang, yelling at him and trying to get his attention to attack just me. Can I do an intimidate check while I guiding bolt him? Sure. That's the highest roll tonight. I haven't broken a 15. Your guiding bolt hits. Roll your intimidation check as he takes five that radiant damage bolt. and is damage. Oh man! This is gonna be a one. It's gonna. Yeah. That's that's typical of tonight. Wow. Yeah. Your guiding bolt strikes, and this glowing manticore continues swooping down towards you, but it, yeah, it grazed just one of the wings and. As you are yelling and screaming, it it's hard to tell who he's actually focused in on. And that is where we're going to end it for the night, as we are at the top of the round. Oh. We'll pick up here in two weeks. I hope Clever we girl. don't die. All right, oh, we'll and with fine. that, hey. we are going to raid Marbanion's channel. He's part of our Heroes Wanted collective of shows. Night, Brennan. Night, Brendan. Too late. No, that was really good. I enjoyed that. Yeah. 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 Especially so the brunch the... in between. <laughs> so before uh, the raid happens, um, good night, everyone. Good night. And I would like to thank CLT and Kane Phoenix for chatting away in the chat. They got the Ender's Game jokes. They did. You keep telling yourself that. I am. Have a good night, everybody. Good night, all. Good night. Ciao. Night. night.